I am so excited to be here. And this topic about uh, traveling in the God worlds is near and dear to my heart. It's the reason I got into Ekin Carr. Uh, when uh, I, I grew up in, uh, as a Catholic, and um, I, I, uh, I had this desire just to know how it all worked. Is there a God? Is there, is there a heaven? Is it all real? And, and I, I was desperate for these answers. And I was told to believe, and, and I was told to have faith, but I, I really wanted to know. And for me, there, there was a difference. And uh, it actually became a problem for me in, when I was really little because I, it was a problem for my parents and teachers and priests because I was like, you, don't, you can't prove the existence of God. You don't know how the universe is laid out and you say you know what's best for me? I think not. So when you're, when you're five, that's a problem. And so, so anyway, I, I, when I found Ekinkar, it had so many of the answers to all of my questions. And uh, it wasn't about belief. It was about experience and knowing. And so I went to my first uh, Ekinkar introduction, and they, they taught me the hue, to sing hue. And then they said, listen for the sound, look for the light. And then they told me about soul travel. And I thought, wow, this is it. This is where I want to be, because if I could soul travel, I would know that there was something else. So tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about soul travel in the God worlds. And to do that, I'm going to juggle. And so... <laughs> I know, it's obviously. So I brought my box where I keep all my secrets. Actually, not any secrets. You know, when I first got into Ekinkar, I wanted to know what the secret was. And, and I thought, you know, I went to Ekinkar seminars like this, and I thought, when I get, you know, further along, I'll, I'll learn what the secret... They tell you the secret on the first day. <laughs> Sing, Hugh, fill your heart with love, and off you go. <laughs> Do your spiritual exercise. That's it. <laughs> So anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, for the purposes of this, uh, this, this talk, I want you to imagine that I'm soul, and I am soul, just like all of you, but I mean, for the purpose of this, my physical body, we're going to pretend that I'm soul, and this green ball is my physical body. So I'm soul, I got one of these. This is an important distinction in Ekinkar, because some people think that this is you, and you have one of these. But really, you, you're soul, and you have a physical body, and you need the physical body to interact with physical things. And soul has no problem running that physical body. And if you want to see if you can pay attention to the, where the little green ball is going and what it's doing. So check, check this out. Did you see what I did with the two white balls when the green was in the air? No, because if you keep all your attention on the physical, you miss other things. <laughs> when I was up there, I, I switched the balls around. You didn't miss much. So, when, so uh, uh, before I even found Ekinkar, I, I knew about uh, dreams, and, and I, you know, I thought there was probably a heaven. I didn't know much about it. But I, I learned in Ekinkar that we have not just a physical body, but we have a dream body or an astral body, which represents this pink ball, all right? So soul has both of these, all right? And it has no problem running both bodies at the same time. It's just a matter of where you put your attention. So a lot of times during the day, we're putting our attention on the physical, and then when we're sleeping at night, then we have our attention on the astral plane and in the dream world. So the other thing is in Ekinkar, like I learned... When you die, when you lose this one, you just hang out here, right? Until you get another one of these. And for, for most people, uh, this, this is what they do. <laughs> it's just... This, this is it. Well, you die and come back and die and come back, and after enough, a, a number of lifetimes, uh, you know, you find Ekinkar. And then that, that's what I found is that there's so much more. We have more of these, these physical bodies and there's more of these worlds than I ever imagined. So if you come back enough times, it, it, those are your past lives. And there's a place uh, that kind of keeps a record of those past lives, and that's the causal plane. And that represents this orange ball. And this is a plane of uh, uh, karma. It, well, it, it's a plane of like past lives and memories and, and things like that. And so cause and effect really is what it's all about. 
And so soul has three, these bodies. And this is an interesting thing in Ekinkar because I always thought soul travel, I first thought like I would just leave my body and go places and I, I would zoom around, I'd move around. But really soul travel is about putting your attention on these different bodies. It's just becoming aware of them. And in, in Ekinkar, we have a spiritual leader, the Mahanta, the living Ekmaster. He's a soul just like you and me, but he's able to be aware of all of his bodies at the same time. And in a sense, soul just has, it, it, it evolves to a greater state of consciousness, and he's evolved to the point where he can work with everybody. But that's where we're all headed as well. So there's more than just these three bodies. There's also another one. Uh, it's your mental body. And uh, that represents this blue ball. The mental body is kind of where thoughts and ideas come from. A lot of people say, well, my brain is where thoughts and ideas come from. And my understanding is, is uh, it's like your brain interprets all these other things from everywhere else down into this physical body. So I'm going to try and juggle all four of these. Now, again, soul has no problem running all these bodies all at once. Nick, on the other hand, <laughs> so all these bodies I'm talking about, these are inner bodies. And the reason we say inner bodies, they're not like inside you. It's not like it's in your tummy. <laughs> you know, if you do surgery, oh, look, there's this mental body. You know? but, but the reason they're inner bodies is they're not out there somewhere. If you travel in space and you keep going, you're still in the physical world. So it's not out there. And that's why they call them inner bodies. They're higher states of consciousness. And you have a corresponding body for each one of these different planes. And soul travel is just about paying attention, tuning in to those different ones. So there's one more. And uh, this one is uh, the etheric body, and it's kind of like the subconscious, and it's the last, uh, last plane and the last body that you have in the lower worlds. And uh, so they kind of, well, I'm holding them in a stack. But they're not really in a stack like this, but it's a way of thinking about it. And everything I'm talking about tonight is just a way of looking at this, a way of thinking about it. And it's, it's not like official, you won't, you won't find this in any of the Ekinkar books. Uh, <laughs> Not, not any of the ones I've read, anyway, but, but it's just a way of thinking about it. So I'm going to try and juggle all five of these balls at the same time. And uh, don't applaud yet, I didn't do it. <laughs> so uh, it's going to happen fast. <laughs> Meaning, like, once I start, start applauding right away, because it may not last long. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, see, I threw that one in no one, so well, I mean right away. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Oh, sorry, that was a false start. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to pause just for a second so they can edit that out later. <laughs> okay, I'm going to juggle five balls for the first time. So these are, these are what they call the bodies of the lower worlds. Uh, there's higher worlds, and above this one is the soul plane, the soul body. You are soul that has all these bodies. And, you know, one of my questions was, why can't we just have it all now? Why do we got to go through all this, right, to, 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 to become aware? Because we only get to be aware of little bits as we evolve. So why can't we have it all now? And my understanding is, is it's a little bit like this. We're children of God, we're souls, we're sparks of God, and we channel the God power as soul, and that's a very powerful thing. So we actually need training and experience before they turn us loose on the universe. <laughs> like, you don't hand the car keys to a five-year-old. <laughs> you don't give a three-year-old a welding torch. You can do cool things with a welding torch, but you don't want to give it to a little kid. So we come down to these lower worlds to get experience. And... One of the things about soul travel, like I said, it's about becoming aware of these different bodies. And as we evolve, we, be, we, we get a chance to see more and more of those worlds. And it's all about putting your attention in those places. And 
if you want to learn how to do it, it's all over in the work, works of Eck and Carr. Like I said, the secret is out there. Uh, there's so many books that talk about how to go about this. But there's more than just these bodies. After you hit the soul plane, which is the highest one, there's, there's really no end to it. And the reason that we go through all this and all these experiences is because we're actually gaining experience to play the greatest game that's ever been conceived. And that is how much love can you accomplish? How much love can you give? How much love can you receive? How much love can you take in and give out? That's really what it's all about. And that is everywhere in the act works, the secret to soul travel is filling yourself with love, expanding your consciousness to see more of these that are higher up. So I brought six of these balls out. This is actually more than I can juggle. It's not going to stop me from trying. <laughs> but so I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I'm going to try and throw all these up and at least just catch them once. It may take a couple of tries. Um, and the last thing I want to say about Ekinkar, the thing I love about it so much, the first time I went to an Ekinkar event, uh, I saw someone dancing. And I thought, that's so wonderful, because the church I went to was very somber and sad. In Ekinkar, there was so much joy and I wanted to serve. And I didn't know how to dance, and I didn't know how to play instruments. This is all I got. <laughs> but, but my point is that every single person, every soul has a unique way that they can give love, that they can serve, that they can expand their consciousness to see all these worlds, and it never ends. And a soul above the soul plane, you don't need to take any more bodies on. There aren't any more bodies. You just grow in consciousness. But it never ends. But I know there's at least six more. <laughs> so I'm going to try and do this. That's all right. I'll edit that out. I'm just warm enough. <laughs> so six is three in each hand at the same time. <laughs> Maybe I should just stop there. So before I do this, uh, one other thing is, as a, if, if you're new to Eck and Eck and Carr and you want to find out more about these God worlds, there's information about it everywhere in the Eck and Carr works. And if you're considering whether it is something you want to take on, my personal recommendation is do it. It's a path of joy. It's a path of love. It's a path of experience and a path of knowing. Thank you. All right, here we go. to take that. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your journey. <laughs>